Okay, so in this video we're really going to start looking at proper differential equations, um, proper first order differential equations. Uh, these are going to be exact differential equations, um, and what we're going to do is recognise the exact differential equations, and therefore we can solve them very quickly and very easily um, using what we learned when we did about implicit differentiation of products of x and y. Let's have a look at the, an example. So here's an exact differential equation. Um, it's called exact differential equation because this side here is actually exactly um, is the exact differential of a product of x and y. So in particular, if we differentiate x y, we know that we get differential of x times y plus x times differential of y. which is just the same as a bit here. So we can replace all of this part with this here. If we do that, this equation gets a lot easier to solve. We now integrate both sides. So integrating this side just gives us x, y. Integrating this side, hopefully that's doable. Uh, integral of sine x is what, minus cos x. course you know what integral of sine is here a bit of a c3 and we're done so the clever thing is me recognizing this bit here that was the hard bit right um you don't need to just remember all these guys you just have to spot it from up here and the reason i know that this is the different is like is the product that differentiates this it's by looking up here and recognizing that this y differentiates to give this dy dx and this x differentiates to give this 1 that you can't see because 1s are always invisible, aren't they? And that means that that x and that y times together will give me the right answer. Um, I'm going to show you a couple more examples where we sort of magically know the answer is. And then I'm going to talk about how we would do it if we weren't blessed with the fact that we wrote the question. So here's your second exact differential equation. So generally what you look at is you look at this bit here next to the dy dx and see does that differentiate to give this bit and does the bit next to here differentiate to give this bit? And you kind of see that yes it does. In fact it's the x squared and the y that when we differentiate them will give us the same thing here. So differential of x squared is 2x times by y of the loan. Then leave the x squared alone and differentiate y. Yeah so that bit there works. So I can write down this bit here as being replaced this thing here with this. And then I can integrate this side, of course that means it gets rid of the dx bit. This side integrated is that. Let's give you a third example. And you can see here that oh yeah this this y squared differentiates to give two y dy dx and this x differentiates to give this one so that means the product I want is y squared times by x because differential of y squared is two y dy dx leave the x alone and then we leave the y squared alone differentiate the x. That is the same as that, written slightly differently, backwards, and this bit here is messed around, but it's the same thing. So that means I can rewrite this top as being d dx y squared x is equal to cos x. Integrate this, I get x squared, sorry, y squared x. I get cos x, I get sine x plus c. Now, how does one go about doing this? Have a look at that one in the top corner. Um, what I do is I look at the bit 
next to the dy dx usually, um, the bit that contains only x terms, and you circle it. And then you think about what happens when you differentiate that. So when we differentiate x cubed, what do we get? Well, x cubed goes to 3x squared. And you look to see if over here you have 3x squared. Oh, you do, yes. Yeah. So that go there goes to be that bit. And then you look to see what's left over here. In this case, y. And then you think, what happens when you differentiate y with respect to x? Okay, you get y dx like that. So that means that this bit goes to be this bit here. And then you just check to make sure there's nothing else left over that would be nasty, like a minus sign or another number or something. In this case, there isn't. So that means those two things there times together will differentiate to give this thing up here. And then you integrate. One last one. So again, I go to where the dy dx is. I pick out things on x parts. So ignore this e y because that's a y part. Pick out the x part only. Think about what x squared differentiates to. It goes to be 2x. Okay, so yeah, it goes here to be the 2x. Then look at what's left over here, which I've taken away this 2x it's differentiated to. Then I think what happens when I differentiate e to the y where I get e to the y again times by dy dx, it's implicit differentiation, I'm using the chain rule. And does that give it? Yeah, it does. So that works. So this thing here could be written as d dx of x squared e to the y, and that's all equal to 4. Integrate this side, gives me x squared e to the y, append that to run out. I integrate the 4, get 4x plus the opposite. Back over here, did that make sense? This, yeah, um, here's the dx dy. I'm going to ignore the y bits, just look at the x bit. x differentiates to be 1. Brilliant. That means I've got y squared, and y squared differentiates to be 2y dy dx. That's what gave me that bit there. Up here on this one, look at this, the y squared, it was x squared. The x squared differentiates to be the 2x, so the bit next to the 2x is the y, which differentiates to be the y dx, so I need the x squared and the y in there. It's worth when you do these the first few times, once you've figured out what you think it is, to actually compute it here, I've kind of skipped ahead. It would be nice in here to actually check when you differentiate that, using the product rule, using the implicit differentiation that we did last time, does that actually equal this? If I did this one here, if I differentiated that, using implicit differentiation, the product rule, when I get back this, then you start getting a feel for what's actually going on and you get easier to spot the combinations that you need. Um, one thing, beware of the minus sign. Beware of the erroneous minus sign. If I was to go up here and change that to a minus sign, this is no longer an exact differential because this doesn't differentiate to be 3x squared. Well, sorry. It doesn't differentiate to be minus 3x squared. So the minus sign gets in the way there. So as soon as you change the sign, it doesn't work. As soon as you put a number in here, it doesn't work. Because 2x cubed is going to be 6x squared. Or anything like that, you can't get rid of that 2. So it needs to be exact. So it's a good name, isn't it? Exact differential equations. Okay, have a go. And I will see you next time.